Good morning, everyone. In teaching the clarinet to beginners and young students, there are several axioms that have become almost universally accepted. The expansion of the abdomen when breathing, the stretching of the chin in order to allow the musculature of the embouchure to supply nuanced pressure to the reed, a fast airstream created by keeping the tongue high, articulating by putting the tip of the tongue on the tip of the reed very lightly and moving it as little as possible. And finally, when forming the fingers on the clarinet, gentle curve in all fingers and keeping the curve as the fingers go up and down. Due to the extremely short time that I have for this presentation, I'm not going to address any of those issues, but rather I'd like to talk about an issue that is gone largely overlooked, the correspondence of the hands. Along the way, we'll discover some related subjects that the beginning student can carry through a lifetime of productive and injury-free playing. Music theorists refer to a pentachord. The pentachord is a five-note scale, usually in major or minor mode. Here are two pentachords. But the term pentachord is deceptive because the pentachord is not a chord. It's a scale. So I prefer calling it a five-note scale rather than a pentachord. And the clarinet has two five-note scales, one in the left hand and one in the right hand. The left hand five note scale starts with open G and as we work our way down, we add the thumb for F, the index finger for E, the middle finger for D, and the ring finger for C. In the left hand, we do the same thing. We have open C, but we skip the right thumb because the right thumb has the important job of supporting the instrument. And instead, we put down the index finger for B flat, the middle finger for A, the ring finger for G, and the pinky for F. C is the pivot note between those two five-note scales. And the two scales together make up F major, the natural scale of the modern clarinet, lowering and lifting one finger at a time. Ordinarily, scales are taught from the bottom up. On piano, for example, And the same thing is true on stringed instruments. But on wind instruments, we have to start from the top and go down so that the fingers can learn how to seal the holes one at a time. We're going to start with the left hand, of course. I prefer to start with E rather than open G because it gives the student something to grab onto. G is a logical choice, but it's actually a difficult note because it's the only time that the hand actually loses contact with the instrument. Now to simplify things, I highly recommend starting by balancing the clarinet on the right index finger rather than on the right thumb. We're not going to use the right hand for a while and the index finger pressing up is much stronger than the thumb is. The hands are built for grasping. The fingers grasp and they have strength but they do not have strength in this direction. And the thumb, when it's trying to lift up, is not strong. It's strong pushing this way, but it's weak lifting this way. I'd like to offer three of the many possible finger exercises you can give to improve the strength and flexibility of your fingers. The first one is called spider doing push-ups on a mirror. Here's the spider. Here's the mirror, doing the push-ups. Now, when we do stretching exercises, if we think of a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the maximum stretch or the maximum push in this case, keep it at a level 3. Keep it light. Keep it soft. You don't ever want to approach any kind of discomfort, much less pain. And if you look at the spider from this direction, Notice that the thumb is participating in the push-up. 
Next we have two ducks in conversation. To make a duck with your hand, you take the four fingers and cluster them around the thumb and bring the thumb pad and the pinky finger pad together. This position is very beneficial to the carpal tunnel and helps the wrist a lot. So here we have my right-handed duck and here's my left-handed duck. They'll say hello to you and then they'll have a little conversation. And the ducks are polite, but they're informal. So they don't bow deeply the way you might to the Queen of England. They just bow a little bit to each other. And they can face you and do some of their bowing and then they can also make circles like this. This is excellent for wrist health and finger health. And finally, I'd like to give you the Simone Biles goodbye. I'm videotaping this in Houston in May, and she just completed a Yurchenko double pike in the vault. And it's the first time a woman has ever done that. I saw it, it was extraordinary. And then she was interviewed afterwards and she was gracious and well-spoken. And then at the end of the, end of the interview, she said, bye-bye. She didn't say bye-bye the way the Queen of England might, but she spread her fingers, she showed us her palm and waved goodbye. So we're gonna wave goodbye, not only with the right hand as Simone Biles did, but also with the left hand together. We're waving goodbye. And in doing that, I'm actually pulling back on the fingers and thumb a little bit, but not too much. If I show you vertical with the fingers this way, I'm pulling back like that, but not to the point where it feels any kind of strain or stress. And if I show you this way, the thumb also is participating similarly to the spider doing push-ups on a mirror. Now we're going to learn our first notes. We'll start with E and play a little three-note melody going E, D, C, balancing the clarinet on the index finger of the right hand or holding the thumb rest with the index finger and the thumb, either one. Here's our first melody. Due to the time constraints, I'll be playing all of these examples a little faster than a beginner would. Now we can offer a three-note scale going up. Composers from ancient times through Mozart, Bach, Beethoven, Shostakovich love taking melodies and inverting them. In other words, turning them upside down. So the simplest of melodies can be turned upside down and we can go up instead of down. Etc. But there's a hidden problem, and that is that when I go up, I'm not creating a series of whole tones. There's a half tone, a half step in there. From the E to the F is a half step. And on wind instruments, it's pretty hard to tell the difference between a half step and a whole step because we can't see the difference. On a keyboard, we can, and I'll choose G major. Going to the keyboard again, here's a beginner playing a five note scale on the keyboard. And the beginner can easily see that there's no black note and thus we have a half step. And to make it dramatic, we change the B natural to B flat we can see how putting the half step between the second and third notes of the scale changes the mood entirely. It's perfectly fine to call major happy and minor sad, and then later on we can expand our vocabulary. So major can be uh, confident or it can be optimistic, and minor can be nostalgic or thoughtful. But for the moment, happy and sad are good enough. And on the keyboard, you can see the difference between whole steps and half steps. Now, I'm about to prove that I'm not a violinist, but my family does 
own a violin that used to belong to my wife's father when he played in his high school orchestra. And I want to show you how you can see the difference between whole steps and half steps as I play the G string of the violin. Isn't that a lovely tone? And now you can see though that the first finger and the second finger are widely spaced and then the third finger is not. And if we want to change it from G major to G minor, we pull the second finger in close to the first finger and widen the distance between the second finger and the third finger. And therefore you can see and hear the difference between major and minor, between half step and whole step. We can do that on the clarinet by adding three notes to the left hand before we go into the right hand. Those notes are going to be throat A, index finger F sharp, and fork E flat. The only one of these that's difficult is A, because we all know that it's a problem learning how to roll the index finger from the ring to the A key. Supporting the clarinet with the right hand index finger on the thumb breast actually helps. Try it sometime. Try with yourself and your students playing E to A, supporting it with the index finger versus supporting it with the thumb. I think it's easier. And you'll notice that I am slurring so that I avoid the possibility of a slight silence between the notes, allowing the finger to jump. If you slur, then you can hear the finger jump and you can learn to avoid it. The next note is F sharp, and it's very easy to coordinate. Instead of going G, F, E with the thumb and the index finger, we go G, index finger first. We skip the thumb. Instead of... And then we go to C, D, E flat, we play E flat with the fork of the left hand, not with the side key. That'll come later, and of course we'll use it much more often than we do the fork. But the fork is actually easier for small fingers, such as a 10-year-old might have, compared with uh, adult fingers that I have right now. And using the fork fingering will come in handy when we go to the right hand for a reason that you'll see in a minute. So now we have the possibility of playing in C major and C minor, in D major and D minor, staying in the left hand and hearing the difference between the scales as we had the same tonic for major and minor. to go into the left hand, excuse me, the right hand, from the left hand to the right hand. In the right hand, we will start by sliding the right thumb under the thumb rest in its normal position, which is between the thumbnail and the knuckle. And we don't come in directly from the side, it comes in at a slight angle, and then we curve the fingers around the holes. Here's where the correspondence of the hands can become so illuminating. As we go down in the right hand, our first three notes are C, B flat, A, and they mirror G, F, E from the left hand. The difference being that we don't use the thumb. So, As we continue on down, the next three notes mirror the left hand as well. And then we can play in the right hand all of the five finger songs and exercises that we did in the left hand. And we can immediately 
make it more colorful and more interesting by adding B natural and A flat. B natural, middle finger, scar corresponds to F sharp, index finger in the left hand. And A flat in the right hand corresponds to the fork E flat in the left hand. And now we have the ability to play major and minor in F and G in the right hand. Now we're ready to go to the clarion register. We'll start by playing our pivot note C and as everyone does, pushing down the register key and being surprised by how high the note is in the upper register. And then we continue on down our scale playing twelfths. And of course we don't try to slur back down the twelfth. That's really very difficult, uh, but slurring up is easy and as a result we can play the five notes of the right hand overblowing an octave plus a fifth to the right hand. Now for me one of the coolest things about the clarinet is that the right hand of the clarion register corresponds to the left hand of the Chalamot register at the octave. I think of all the things I love about the clarinet, that's maybe my favorite. And then we also know that uh, overblowing the twelfth from the right hand to the right hand uh, corresponds as well. Now the next couple of steps in learning the clarinet will be to learn chromatics in the Chalamot register, all of the chromatics, connecting the registers, starting by going down, and then adding the left hand of the clarion register. And I again highly recommend that you start connecting the registers in a downward direction rather than an upward direction because it's so much easier. And try to avoid the term crossing the break. Let's talk about connecting the registers and make it sound as easy as it is when you go down. If the student has mastered E to A in the left hand, then going becomes very easy. And once having mastered that, it becomes a little easier to go back and seal all the holes uh, going in the upward direction. Knowledge of the hands across the registers will come in very handy later on. I think it's a great idea to have your intermediate students play all of their major and minor scales for a three octave range once they've learned how to go up to, to high E. So low E up to I, high E three octaves. And to do that, I start on the tonic note, go up to E, turn around, go back down to bottom E, and end on the tonic note. And while doing this, I notice that because the clarinet overblows to the 12th, instead of the octave, the fingerings are not necessarily the same in the two hands as you go into the upper register. So for example, in C major, the left hand fingering will be the same, thumb F and C in the upper register, but the right hand will be different, B natural in the low register and F natural in the upper register. Here's a scale in three octaves in C major, and I'm thinking triplets to make the notes work out right on the beat. So here's our beat. And maybe you couldn't see my 
right left thumb well, but you could certainly see that in the low register we had the middle finger for the B natural and in the upper register F for the F natural. Then uh, we go on to G major going around the circle of fifths. In the right hand we have a different fingering. It will be F sharp, index finger, thumb, C natural. Left hand will be different also. Pinky F sharp, pinky C natural. Here's G major. <laughs> do one more, we'll do D major, in which the left hand is different and the right hand is the same. In D major, we have C sharp with the pinky and G natural in the upper register, whereas in the right hand we have pinky F sharp and pinky C sharp. Different in the left hand, same in the right hand. And so to summarize, we'll hold the clarinet with the index finger of the right hand under the thumb rest while learning the five note scales and some chromatics in the left hand. We will slur everything and avoid using the tongue for a period of time. When the right hand is introduced, we repeat all of the exercises and melodies that we played in the left hand on the five notes. And this allows the thumb to ease into supporting the weight of the instrument. Do light finger stretching and strengthening exercises daily. And I emphasize light and I emphasize daily. Note the correspondence of the hands. The right hand produces the same pattern of whole steps and half steps as the left hand, skipping the thumb. And finally, train the student to hear whole steps and half steps, major and minor, from the very beginning. And with that, I will say bye-bye.